Hey everyone, it's Ryan with This Smart House and on today's video, we're gonna take a look at my favorite plugins for Octoprint. Now, if you caught my last video about Octoprint, you, I kind of showed you what Octoprint is capable of and I showed you some of the plugins that I think are essential to even get started. So on today's video, I'm gonna take you back through a few of those plugins, just so if you haven't watched that video, you can see them here. And then I'm gonna go show you my other favorite plugins for Octoprint. So if you didn't catch my last video, you can see a link here above on how to set up and install Octoprint and get it configured so you can control your Octoprint instance from Home Assistant. On today's video, I've broken them down into a couple separate categories to hopefully make things organized. So I've broken them down into Printer enhancements, Octoprint enhancements, backups, and the cool factor. So let's take a look at the first category, printer enhancements. Now these are gonna be things that we're gonna to use to modify the behavior of our printer and add some additional functionality to the physical printer itself. The first plugin we're gonna take a look at is the PSU Control family of plugins. Now I briefly mentioned this in my last video, and what this does is it allows you to take a smart plug and plug your 3D printer into that smart plug and be able to control it inside the Octoprint interface. Why this is super important is because when a 3D printer is running, even when it's not printing, it still runs fans, still consumes energy, and it's loud. So this allows you to turn off all the main functions of the printer itself, or be able to keep Octoprint running. So there's a series of plugins that you can choose from. Depending on what type of smart plug that you're gonna use, you can choose from a variety of different plugins that will directly interface with the control on your plug. Now, if you have something like Home Assistant, you can install the Home Assistant control and use that to control one specific element of Home Assistant to turn it on and off that particular. So if we look at my interface here, we'll click on the settings button here, scroll down to PSU control. So there are two parts to this plugin. The first being the actual PSU control plugin. The second one is the one that you wanna select for your specific smart plug. So I'm using the Home Assistant plugin, which allows me to put in my address and access token for my 3D printer, and then be able to select a single entity to turn on and off to control that. Now, if you don't have Home Assistant set up, if we go over to the plugin manager and we look for PSU, we search for PSU, we'll see a whole variety of different pre-built controllers. So if you're using MQTT, OpenHab, you can use, you can actually control it with a relay plugged into the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. If you're using Shelly, Tasmoda, Tandabell, TP-Link, or Wemo, you can directly interface with any of those. But if you're already running Home Assistant, I recommend installing the Home Assistant one. You can control any type of plug without having to go in and configure an individual provider. For the PSU main control, you can leave most of these set by default, but you do wanna enable turn, automatically turn on PSU and automatically turn off PSU when idle. What this is gonna do is if any of these trigger commands come from the G code, usually if you're using like Cura and you wanna start a print job and the PSU is off, if you tell Cura to go ahead and send the print job to your printer, and it receives any of these commands, it's gonna go ahead and activate the PSU and turn your printer on automatically. If your printer is sitting idle for more than 15 minutes or any time period you want, you can have it also let you turn off the PSU. You can also set a wait for temperature to prevent the printer from being shut off while sitting there waiting to warm up. You never wanna turn a printer off when the hot end is at full temperature because you could cause issues with it not having the, the fans being able to cool it. So make sure that you set a wait for temperature so it will basically wait for the print head to hit a certain temperature before it shuts off the power supply. So the next plug we're gonna take a look at is for your Raspberry Pi. It's called GPIO Fan Control. If you have a Raspberry Pi with a three pin fan connected, it allows you to use that third pin to control when that fan runs. So again, if you're like me and you have your 3D printer in your office or bedroom or wherever it is, and you don't want those fans running all the time, especially when the printer isn't running, so that you can turn on and off the, the Raspberry Pi fan if your printer's not running. Now, this is especially important if you're gonna have this in a hot area and you wanna make sure the Raspberry Pi stays cool, you can enable and disable the fan when the printer isn't running. So, which pin you're using and be able to interface with the different various G-code commands. You can also allow it to the CPU to request cooling if it gets too hot. It allows you to set the fan speed right here from the front of Octopi. So the next plugin we're gonna talk about is called Better Heater Timeout. This allows you to automatically timeout and shut off the bed if there's no command received. This is helpful if you decided to preheat your bed in hot end to say change the filament and then got distracted, went off and did something else. You don't want your printer just sitting there running all the time 
for no reason. So what this will let you do is this lets you set a timeout value that if after so many seconds, there's being no new commands being received, it'll go ahead and shut off the hot elements. Now it's got an option in here to allow a timeout. So what this will do is basically every time it receives a new temperature change command, it will go ahead and reset that clock. Or you can set it to say after heating starts, wait that many seconds and then you can set the full timeout just for the bed. It's a pretty simple plugin that can be used to keep your printer safe and so it doesn't just run amok if you happen to leave it on accidentally. Now the final one in this category is requires some extra hardware, but I think it adds a really cool dimension to the printer. WS281X LED status. Now there are a number of ways of adding LEDs to your 3D printer. It uses the compatible WS281X series of LEDs that are individually addressable or series addressable and allows you to not, not only light up your 3D printer during print operations so you can see better from the camera, it also has enhancements to show you progress and different elements while the 3D printer is warming up, cooling down, printing, or in idle mode. So it allows you to look at the printer and tell what, what's happening with it at the time. You can even have it do an LED progress bar to show you how far along your print is going. So this is a pretty cool one and if needed, I can do a video about how to set up the hardware that's required for this one. So if you do use any of these WS LED strips, you can use this and one pin on your Raspberry Pi to control your LEDs. It also has a really cool feature called a torch mode, or for us Americans, flashlight mode. Whenever you access the webcam, it'll turn on all the LEDs white so you can see your print progress much easier. You can also use this with a later plugin called Octolapse to have it flash the LEDs white when it's taking the picture for the time lapse to give you better quality during your prints. So that's it for the printer enhancements. Let's hop over to the next category of Octoprint enhancements. All right, so for our next section, let's talk about enhancements to Octoprint. Now, to start this section off, I'm gonna briefly mention a couple plugins that I showed in the last Octoprint video, specifically the MQTT plugin and the MQTT Home Assistant Auto Discover. Now, these are critical if you want to be able to control and connect your 3D printer to Home Assistant and be able to issue control commands from Home Assistant back to the 3D printer. And if you have, if you missed that, there's a link here above to my previous video, and then I've got the timestamp down below where that section starts, so you can skip right to it. The other plugin that I wanna talk about in that same video is Octo Everywhere, and this is the ability to go out and be able to control your Octo Print instance from your phone or mobile device or even their website without having to open up ports to your inside network. Now again, I've got the timestamp here below to show you where that section starts on how to get that configured. So with those two out of the way, let's look at some new plugins. Now the first one is called Themify, and if you've noticed in this video, my Octoprint instance has been in dark mode and I love everything dark mode. So this allows you to, to be able to apply different themes to your Octoprint instance. If we go down here to Themify, there are some pre-built ones, which you can you can find these on their GitHub page, describing which, we, it, which each of them are, and allows you to make some different changes. So not only does it allow you to apply a theme, but you can then customize that theme to your heart's content. So that's a great way of making the Octoprint instance your own. The next one we'll talk about is Touch UI. Now, if you're gonna be accessing this from say a screen that's attached to your Raspberry Pi, or you wanna access this from a mobile interface and not use the mobile app, then the Touch UI will adapt the interface to a large, easy to you know, press with the finger interface. And it allows you to trigger this on and off depending on a cookie installed on your browser. So it will automatically load up the first time with the Touch UI, but you can immediately disable it for that particular browser. If you're using a desktop computer, you can turn that off. So if you look, it's much more enhanced for smaller screens. Obviously it looks kind of weird on my desktop, but on your mobile phone or tablet, it looks a lot better. and allows you to have nice large buttons that you can click on and it brings all of the controls much larger so you don't have to scroll or you don't have to zoom in to make controls. And if you want to disable it for the browser, you just hit the three lines at the top, go to touch UI settings, and then toggle touch UI off. So again, this is great if you're wanting to use this on a tablet or a mobile phone, or again, if you have a, a, a touch display attached to your Raspberry Pi. The next we're gonna talk about an enhancement to the logic of your 3D printer. So if you ever notice that when you make a 3D print, sometimes the time estimate can wildly vary depending on different features of the print, and you may be a lot shorter or a lot longer than you originally anticipated. I've had prints that have said they're gonna take 12 to 14 hours that end up taking five. This plugin called Print Time Genius will do analysis on the G code and then give you a more accurate representation of the print times. It'll show a separate estimate for 
its precise durations versus the fuzzy ones that come out of the slicer or the printer itself. It also allows you to analyze your G-code and come up with a better estimate right off the bat. This next one I'll briefly mention, it is a paid service after the free trial, or you can host this one yourself. It's called the Spaghetti Detective. Now the Spaghetti Detective is a machine learning algorithm that will use the camera feed from your webcam and try to determine if your print is currently failing. So if your print happens to move while printing and then it's just creating a large bundle of spaghetti, it will use machine learning to figure out that there is spaghetti on, on the print bed and pause your print job so that you can intervene with it. Now it is a paid service if you wanna use the cloud version, but there is an ability to roll your own or make your own install on a web server. This will not run on something like a Raspberry Pi. You actually have to have more horsepower than that. I'm currently running this on the same server my Plex server runs on and it runs pretty great. So far, I haven't had any print failures, so I haven't been able to test it, um, but I'll probably be doing some larger larger jobs here in the future that will allow me to test out some of the features of that. We'll see how that works in the future. If you're interested, I could do a video on how to set up the Spaghetti Detective on your own server and be able to run that for free in your own environment. Let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in that type of video. Now the last plugin is one I use very frequently and it's the Telegram bot. So I have Telegram integrated with my home assistant so I get notifications via Telegram. I can also do some basic controls. So if you look here on screen, you'll see every time a print job starts, I get a notification with a picture. When the print job finishes, it sends me a copy of the time lapse, both from Octolapse and from Octoprint and I get commands whenever the printer starts up or shuts down, begins printing, if there's any failures or things like that. I can also type in a slash help command and be able to do different things via just my Telegram Messenger. So I can actually upload G-code file, I can stop or pause a print, I can request a GIF or a super GIF, a longer GIF of the current video happening. I can modify settings. I can turn on or off the printer's power supply unit. I can see progress. I can tell it to shut up or don't shut up, send me the current status, all sorts of really great things that you can do from the plugin, it sends it to you automatically, you don't even have to open up the app or go to the web page. So super powerful, super cool, and the setup isn't too difficult. So I recommend this one highly if you're gonna be doing print jobs and you're not gonna sit there and monitor the printer the entire time. I might do a short video here in the future on how to set it up. It is pretty simple. You do have to know how to create Telegram bots, but the instructions are pretty thorough on their GitHub page, and it is very simple to set up a, a a bot. But if it's your first time, it may be a little more difficult. Again, if this is something you want me to do a short video on, let me know in the comments below. All right, so that's it for our Octoprint enhancements. Now the last couple categories we'll go through fairly quickly. So in this second to last category, we'll quickly show you some enhancements for backups. Now, if you know me, I'm all about taking backups. I did an entire video, how to automatically backup your home assistant instance using Google Drive. And I love being able to have automated scripts that are gonna back up my stuff and put it out someplace so I don't have to worry about it in case I have a failure. Now, this is super important to me because I ended up shattering one of my SD cards, trying to force it into a, into a 3D printed case that was warped slightly. And I lost my entire Octoprint instance and I hadn't backed it up. So now I am, or religious about backing up my Octoprint instance. So the built-in function in Octoprint allows you to do backups, but they can't be scheduled and they only back up to the SD card and then you have to download them to your computer. So I'm gonna show you a couple of quick plugins that will allow you to automate this function. The first one being backup schedule. Now this allows you to do daily, weekly, monthly backups, or you can do a backup every time Octoprint starts up. I recommend doing a weekly backup unless you're making a lot of changes periodically in your system, but you can tick this box and it will go ahead and schedule a backup automatically of your Octoprint instance. And you can also tell how many you want to retain. So if you want to retain four backups and you can also tell it to exclude your time lapses. So those don't take up a lot of room or your uploads. If you don't care about keeping the G code that you've uploaded to your 3d printer. So with that set up now, it'll automatically generate that backup. But again, now that backup is still only on your SD card. It's not being replicated out outside. That's where this other plugin comes into play. So this plugin is called simply called Google drive back. Now what this allows you to do is create a backup backup and have it exported to your Google Drive. And it does tell you, along with the other one, it's not gonna monitor your storage. So if you do run too many backups and you fill it up, it's just gonna error out. It's This one's a little bit more complicated to set up than some of the other ones because you actually have to generate a client secrets.json. But if you go to the documentation in GitHub, it steps you through how to do that. So as you can see, if you go to their website, it tells you how to generate this client.json 
to be able to set up a backup. So this again, maybe something that might be a little more complicated than you want to deal with, but it's really not that difficult if you've generated these type of uh, of client keys before for things like Home Assistant. But once it's set up, it's one of those kind of set it and forget it. And then you have automated backups that are taken offsite in case your SD card fails. I do recommend taking your backups and setting them offsite, either using a plugin like this or having a manual process where you download it and place it in your Google Drive. So for our last category, we'll talk about one of the coolest plugins that you can use to make awesome time lapses, and that's called Octolapse. This is a plugin that everybody knows about that uses Octoprint. And they baked in some simple time lapses, and I'll show you a difference between the two time lapses that you get from the built-in one versus the one from Octolapse. Obviously, time lapses only really look good if you're gonna print a taller object because it's something that you need to be able to see, or if you have a higher angle to you know, look down on the object being printed. So if we look at this first example, this is a time lapse that's being created by the built in Octoprint time lapse function. Now, if we watch this, you'll notice the print head is moving because every time it makes a Z axis increase, it changes the Z axis, it takes a picture, which is pretty cool. It makes a nice video anyway. If you use the Octolapse version, it sets the print head to the exact same position and it gives you this really cool kind of creation shot that is not available in the built-in one. It's a little bit more complicated, but the setup is pretty easy and it will only take a picture when that printer head is in the same position. So it gives you this kind of growing effect versus the you know the actual movement around. This is great again for tall objects. If you're doing a wider object that's shorter and you still wanna take a time lapse, then I recommend going ahead and doing both time lapses in Octolapse and in the Octoprint time lapse. It doesn't really add much, it just creates two videos instead of one. Now, this plugin is pretty powerful. It has a ton of options in it, and it even sets up a link in your header. But this allows you to create a variety of different options in your Octolapse. So for example, you can set which printer you have, you can set what type of stabilization you want. So you could do all sorts of different positions. So I have mine centered, so it's gonna center it over the object. So every time it goes to take a picture, it's gonna move the print head into the center, take that picture. You can also have it set it to a different position on the printer. You can have it move it out of the way entirely, or you can have it do an animated orbit where the print head moves into a different position. So it gives you a nice orbit effect during the print out. You can select what type type of frame rate you want. If you want 30 frames or 60 frames, a fixed length video, or you can have it do, you can also you can also customize how it's triggered. So there's a ton of options in here that you might wanna dig into. Every time you start a print job, it'll pop up a window asking you to confirm the time-lapse plan. So it'll let you make those, tweak those settings per instance. And I've got mine set to automatically time out after 15 seconds. So that way, if I'm not at the interface, it doesn't wait for me to, to accept the new time-lapse as it goes forward. This one is super cool, it gives you a lot of really neat features to make those awesome time lapses that you see a lot on YouTube. And obviously with those with good lighting and great camera position, you can make some cool time lapses automatically for your printer. Hopefully you've enjoyed this overview of some of my favorite plugins with Octoprint so far. Now I am a relative noob when it comes to 3D printing and 3D printing plugins and Octoprint, but these are, I've done some research, I've read some different blogs, watched some different YouTube videos, and these are the ones that I find the most helpful. Now, one of the things with all plugins, they're being maintained by specific developers. So if you really like a plugin, I recommend that you thank those particular developers or support their projects. And there are some times where these plugins will be abandoned. And so if that, if that happens in the future, I might do an update video showing some of my, my, the plugins that I like at the particular time or replacements for old ones. If you have a favorite plugin, please leave it in the comments here below and I'll be happy to check it out. I think there's a great community behind Octoprint. There's some great enhancements and features that you can add to an old printer for nothing. So thanks again for watching this video. If you want to see more content about 3D printing, let me know in the comments below or feel free to join our Discord server to ask questions about any of my existing videos or if you're getting into 3D printing or have questions about it, jump in there and ask questions. So thanks again for watching this video. If you want to see more videos about 3D printing, check this playlist here. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day.